Solving Systems by Substitution Our objective is to solve systems of linear equations in two variables by substitution. Why learn this? You can solve systems of equations to help select the best value among high-speed internet providers. Let's start by looking at the steps to solve systems of equations using substitution. Step 1. Solve for one variable in at least one equation. Sometimes this is already done for you. Step 2. Substitute the resulting expression into the other equation. So whatever your variable that you solve for in step 1 equals, it might be more than just a single number. You're going to take that whole set of values and you're going to substitute that whole thing in to the other equation. Then solve that equation to get the value of the first variable. So this is, once again, this is how you solve a system of equations. So there's more than one variable. So you're going to have to figure out how to solve for one variable, then solve for the other. Step four. Substitute that value into one of the original equations and solve. Your last step is to simply put it as an ordered pair. So let's look at this as an example. It might make a little more sense. So we want to make sure we have a variable by itself. That's step one. Well, awesome. They did that for us. We have y equals 2x. So since y equals 2x, you can take that value and substitute it in for the y that you had here. So that would read 2x equals x plus 5. You're replacing the y with the entire value. That's substitution. And now we got to solve for x. So we can subtract x from both sides, so we get the variable on the same side of the equation. So then we're left with x equals 5. There's one variable. But once again, with a system, you have two variables here. So you have your x, now you need to find your y. So just like they said in step 4, we're going to substitute this value back in. It doesn't matter which original equation you put this back in for. So we could have y equals 2 times 5 since x equals 5. So y in this case equals 10. The very last step is to write this as a coordinate an xy ordered pair. So x, y. It's an ordered pair. Let's try another one. Ooh, we're getting a little trickier. Alright, so step one, we need to find one variable or make one variable by itself. Awesome. They put one variable by itself in this one here. So that means y equals this whole quantity. So we're going to replace the y, since y equals x minus 4. So to rewrite that, that says 2x plus the quantity x minus 4, since that's going to replace your y. Everything else stays the same. It still equals 5. All you've done is take the y out and stick x minus 4 in for it. Now we need to combine like terms. 2x and x make 3x. This minus 4, it doesn't have any like terms on the left-hand side, so it just stays. We're going to add 4 to both sides because we want to get x by itself. So now we're left with 3x equals 9, so x equals 3. There's one variable. 
Just like in the last example, once you have one variable, you need to substitute that back in so you can find the other value. Okay, so we need to substitute that back in. So now we've got y equals 3 minus 4. So y equals negative 1. Last step. Write it as an ordered pair. x, y, ordered pair. So you have 3, negative 1. What's really cool about these is you can always check your answer. If you're not sure if you have the correct answer, you can plug it back in. Just like we did in that last section where we substituted in our x and our y and we decided whether it worked for both equations. If it works for both equations, then the answer is yes, that works, you're good to go. So like 2 times 3 minus 1 is 5 and negative 1 equals 3 minus 4. So we were good. Let's try this next one. All right, step one, get a variable by itself. Ah, oh, they didn't give it to us this time, so we have to do it ourselves. This is when you need to pick which variable you're going to solve for. It technically does not matter. However, I'm going to suggest that you don't solve for 4y and get that variable by itself. It's more work. So find a variable that does not have a coefficient. So either of the x's would be okay, or the y in the second equation. Keep in mind, you only need one of the variables in one of the equations by itself. All right, so let's look at the top one. So we're going to get the x by itself. We have x plus 4y equals 6. We're going to get x by itself. So we're going to have x equals negative 4y plus 6. So x equals this quantity. We're going to replace x with that value. So step two, we've got negative 4y plus 6 plus y equals 3. We are now going to solve for y. So we combine like terms, we have negative 3y plus 6 equals 3. We're going to subtract 6 from both sides. So we've got negative 3y equals negative 3. So y equals 1. That's one of the variables. It's a system. Two letters, you need two values. So we're going to substitute this y value back in. So we have x plus 1 equals 3. Well, that means x has to equal 2. Last step. Write them so it says 2, 1. It's an x, y coordinate. So once again, step one, get one of these variables by itself so that way you can actually substitute. If one of them's not by itself, you cannot substitute. So get one of them by itself, then take that value, whatever you got, and stick that in for the variable that you just solved for. Solve for the variable in that equation, which is y in this case, and then substitute that value in. Basically, with substitution, you keep substituting your stuff in until you finally end up with a final solution. Let's get a little trickier. So sometimes when you're trying to do substitution, 
it's not as easy as those last three. So the steps still remain. The step, first step you want to do is you want to get one of the variables by itself. The only variable that that's going to be easy to do that for is the x. All these other ones are going to be way too much work. So we've got x minus 4y equals 11. So we've got x equals 11 plus 4y. All right, x isn't a single number yet, but when we have this, we can substitute that in. Remember, you have to substitute that into the other equation. Otherwise, you're just going to end up with 11 equals 11, which is going to kind of put you at a standstill. So we've got 4y minus 5 times. Remember, hey, this x equals this whole quantity. So we're going to get rid of the x up here, and we're just going to replace it with that. Everything else stays. Nothing else gets to go away. Okay? All you've done is take that variable, that variable is no longer there, and then you have replaced it with what it equals. It equals this 11 plus 4y. All you've done is get rid of the x and put this in for it. That's all you've done. Okay? This all equals 9. Everything else stays the same. The only thing you did was replace this variable with what it equals. Now we need to simplify and solve. Well, we have a number outside of a set of parentheses that have a binomial, which means you need to distribute. So we've got 4y minus 55 minus 20y, and that equals 9. We combine like terms. We have negative 16y minus 55 equals 9. And now we can add 55 to both sides. So we've got negative 16y equals 64, so y must equal negative 4. All right, keep going. All you have is a single number for y. You need one for x too. So we have x minus 4 times negative 4 equals 11. We took this value and we stuck it in for y. So we have x plus 16 equals 11. So x equals negative 5. Sweet, we have a value for our x and our y. All we have to do is write it together. So negative 5 comma negative 4. Let's make that actually look like a comma. There we go. Okay, that is the coordinate that satisfies both equations. This ends our video on solving systems by substitution. If you are still struggling with this, please see your teacher for help.